Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be solving a word problem. Three painters working together for one hour painted seven tenths of the house. It is known that each painter alone would be able to paint the house in an integer number of hours. Each of the painters has a different rate of painting. In how many hours could each of the three painters working alone paint the entire house? Okay, so to be able to solve this problem, we're going to be assigning some variables. So let A, B, and C be the number of hours for each painter. And we're going to assume that A, B, C are distinct uh, natural numbers. In this case, they're going to be satisfying this inequality. Uh, a let's say let's just say the a is the smallest one and c is the largest one and they all need to be greater than one and then uh, we're going to be considering the uh, reciprocals of these numbers because that's going to give us their rates how much they can get done in one hour and their rates are going to satisfy the following inequality if we just reverse the process one over c is going to be less than one over b and that's going to be less than 1 over a okay we also know that in addition to all of this uh, we know that 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c is equal to 7 tenths because we know that all together in one hour they can paint 7 tenths of the house okay now we're going to be using some we're going to be using some inequalities here uh, first of all uh, we do know that uh, 1 over C is less than 1 over B, and that's less than 1 over A. So we can all go ahead and manipulate this and to find uh, an upper bound uh, and a lower bound for our variables. Okay? First of all, uh, we do know that 1 over A plus uh, 1 over B, for example. If you just consider that, uh, in other words, I'm just adding uh, 1 over a to both sides of this inequality. So that would give you uh, is less than 2 over a. And then if you just add the 1 over c to this, or uh, you can just go ahead and consider, for example, uh, let's find something with uh, c and a. Uh, I can safely say that 1 over c is less than 1 over a. So if I go ahead and add this to our inequalities, two inequalities, if you add them together, uh, you're going to be getting 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c less than 3 over a, okay? Since a is the smallest, 1 over a is going to be the largest, and of course, uh, the sum of all these reciprocals need to be less than 3 times the reciprocal of a, okay? So that kind of gives us a really nice bound because we know that 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c is equal to 7 tenths. So if we go ahead and replace it uh, with 7 tenths, from here we get the following. 7 tenths is less than 3 over a. Since a is a positive quantity, we can just go ahead and cross multiply here. And if we do, we're going to get 7a is less than 30, which means a is less than 37 and since a is a natural number or a positive integer greater than 1 uh, a can only be 2 3 or 4 those are the values that a can take we know that um, 30 over 7 is less than 5 so the largest value a can take is going to be 4 okay so now we're going to be testing all these values of a uh, and then see if they work. Uh, let's start with a equals 4, for example. And you're going to notice that a equals 4 actually is not going to work, but let's go ahead and verify that. If we replace a with 4 in this equation here, 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c is equal to 7 tenths, we're going to be getting 1 over b plus 1 over c plus 1 fourth is equal to 7 tenths. And from here, if you do the subtraction, 1 over b plus 1 over c is going to be 7 tenths minus 1 fourth. If you make a common denominator and do the math, you're going to be getting 9 twentieths. Okay? Uh, now, 
we do have a couple uh, different inequalities that we can come up with here. Uh, first of all, for 1 over b plus 1 over c, uh, let's go ahead and compare 1 over b and 1 over c first. Uh, we know that 1 over c is less than 1 over b, so let's go ahead and write that down here. Because b is less than c, uh, we assume that at the beginning, so 1 over c is going to be less than 1 over b. And if I go ahead and add 1 over b to both sides of this inequality, then I'll, I'll be getting 1 over b plus 1 over c being less than 2 over b, okay? Uh, since I'm allowed to add the same quantity to both sides, that's what I did here. I added 1 over b to both sides of this inequality, okay? And this is going to help us because we know that 1 over b plus 1 over c is equal to 9 over 20. So if we replace that with 9 over 20 here, we'll get 9 over 20 is less than 2 over b. And the, with the cross multiplication, we get 9b is less than 40, meaning that b is less than 40 ninths, okay? Now, this tells us that b uh, cannot be 5, but anything less than 5. Uh, and of course, it needs to be greater than 1. So the possible values for b are going to be 2, 3, or 4. But here's the thing. We already found the same values for a here. And then now we're finding that b can be 2, 3, or 4. But that's impossible because we do know that b needs to be greater than a. And our initial assumption here was a equals 4. So in this case, b cannot be any of these values because b needs to be greater than a. And if a is equal to 4, b needs to be greater than 4, but that's not going to work. Okay, so that means that a equals 4 is not going to give us a valid solution. So now we're going to be go, uh, we're going to go ahead and look at the case where a equals 3. Okay, and we're going to have similar uh, arguments here. So we're going to get 1 over b plus 1 over c plus 1 over a, which is 1 third, is equal to 7 tenths. If we do the subtraction, we get 1 over b plus 1 over c is equal to 7 tenths minus 1 third. And if you do the math there, you should be getting 11 thirtieths. Okay, and as you know, uh, 1 over b plus 1 over c is less than 2 over b. So if you go ahead and replace the 1 over b plus 1 over c with 11 thirtieths, we get that 11 thirtieths is less than 2 over b, which gives us 11b is less than 60, and b is less than 60 over 11. And uh, we do know that b needs to be greater than a, which is 3 in this case. So we know that b needs to be greater than 3, but less than 60 elevenths. Uh, that means that b can be 4 or 5. We have two possible values for 5. I'm sorry, for b. And uh, so basically, if we actually go ahead and use a equals 3 and b equals 5, then you're going to be getting that c equals 6, and it's just going to satisfy all the requirements. Okay, so 3, 5, 6 is going to be a triple that works and let's see if there is any other solutions obviously there's no other triple from here and then finally we're going to be checking a equals 2 and in the case of a equals 2 we're going to be using the same idea 1 over b plus 1 over c plus 1 over a which is 1 which is 1 half is equal to 7 tenths subtract 1 half from both sides you get 1 over b plus 1 over c is equal to 7 tenths minus 1 half which is equal to one fifth, okay? And we do know that uh, one over B plus one over C is less than two over B from here. So we can basically replace that with one over five and that should give us one over five is less than two over B or B is less than 10. Okay, we also know that B needs to be greater than A because we know that uh, you know, A is the smallest one. So B is greater than A and A is 2 in this case. So B needs to be greater than 2 and less than 10, meaning that B can be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. And among these, the only one that satisfies our equation is going to be where A equals B, I'm sorry, A equals 2, B equals 6, and C equals 30, okay? 
and it satisfies the original inequality as well because a is the smallest and c is the largest and they're all distinct therefore our possible ordered pairs or the solution set can be written as 2 comma 6 comma 30 and 3 comma 5 comma 6 and this concludes the solution thank you for watching uh, please subscribe and comment um, see you guys in the next video have a good one bye bye